Okay, we're good. Good. Okay, good evening. <coughs> this uh, meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Board of Commissioners is being broadcast <coughs> live by RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. This meeting was videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. So again, good evening. I'd like to first acknowledge our uh, Citizen Advisory Board representative today, uh, Dave Nelson. Dave. Hi, great thank to be here. Dave. Great. Uh, this evening, uh, John Stempek will be board secretary. Yes, Beth? thank you. Good. Okay. Uh, this would be the uh, opportunity for uh, public comment. Do we have any one here to provide public feedback or just comment? Jim, yes, just Jim. Just one point of personal privilege. Yes. I wish to announce that I have put my name in the run for re-election to this committee for another three years, John. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Great. Thank you for uh, sharing that, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Well, this will be how many terms? Uh, well, if there's a hero, it's going to be my 11th term. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That deserves a little bit of recognition. Yeah. Great. Good. Mr. Chairman, I had some yes, comments, but I don't know if you want them now or later. Uh, sure. That would be great. Sure. Okay. Um, I was thinking the other night when I, when I knew that I was going to be at this meeting about this past year, and it's really gone by very f quickly. Obviously, we all are aware of that. And I know RMLD has had a few challenges this year, but I think challenges make you better in the long run. And I think the good things that RMLD has done is outweighs any of the challenges that have been um, facing RMLD. And I do think that the relationship with the CAB from RMLD, from the commissioners, I think it's gotten stronger. And I, wanna, I just want us to continue that focus. I think it's really important that we do that. And I think you have how many employees? 80 plus employees? Uh, about 72 right now. 72? And, and I was thinking, gee, who do I deal with at RMLD? And it's always the CAB, Board of Commissioners, or if I go to a meeting in town. But behind the scenes, you have a lot of employees that do such a great job to keep the lights on, the linemen, the office workers, the warehouse people, the technicians, and all that. So I just think it's important that they get some recognition also. So I want to thank them. The CAB would like to thank them. And I was telling Colleen that I, I saw a crew working in Linfield today, so I stopped and said hi to them. And um, they were talking, but they were working on the LED street lights. And I just, you know, they just sort of like, well, okay, what do you want? And I said, well, I just want to <laughs> say hello and thank you for doing a good job and for what you do and doing it safely. And they sort of really appreciated that. So I just wanted to share that with you. So thank you. Good. That's great, Dave. And I, you know, I know I speak for the rest of the uh, commissioners. I think the relationship has been great. The meetings I've attended, I think they're constructive, collaborative, and uh, you know, uh, not contentious, which doesn't really get uh, no. problem solved. So uh, we, we appreciate the, and, and we'll continue with the good relationships that have been established here. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, next, uh, we have some uh, committee reports uh, that we have a. Uh, Fiber Committee update, uh, <coughs> uh, Chair uh, Dave Talbot. Okay, uh, Bill so will take it away. Good. Uh, Thank the, you, Phil. Uh, fiber Committee met last night. Uh, we had uh, some very interesting discussions. Uh, Mr. Hennessy was also present, and then Mr. Talbot and myself. Uh, we talked about, you know, uh, in terms of using fiber to somehow, you know, further economic development. Basically, at this point, what we're determining is that we need to do some more fact finding that we, uh, we're going to invite a experienced consultant in that will give us information on what questions we should ask, what, what uh, different items, is the, you know, 
And we're looking to schedule that for the February the 11th. I understand you know, the schedule, so. Great. Okay. I know everybody says, you know, it's, a, you know, it's an open meeting, so anybody can attend. But I would urge the, the, uh, the, all the commissioners to attend the meeting because mm -hmm. that would be very important. Good. To ask you more questions. Well, what, what, what are the effects and you know, what questions we should ask and how would we could go about doing that? In terms of that, and hopefully from that point, we would have a, the subcommittee would have a recommendation back to the full board as to the next steps we should be taking. No, that's great, Phil. I think that's consistent. The uh, <coughs> last few meetings we talked about yeah. getting some more information and uh, knowledge so we could take a, a, a proactive but, you know, careful and uh, thoughtful approach. So I, I think this is uh, wonderful uh, in terms of a next step. Um, I don't know if any of the other commissioners would like to comment. Well, I think I, it, well, go ahead. I would say, say I, I think it's a great idea as well. And just to to clarify, we're bringing in the consultant, but it's not a paid engagement. He's just coming in to discuss the opportunities with us. So, good. Those are the best kind. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it can be. Absolutely well, it's a, uh, you know, I, I I think from my experiences, that's, you know, you know, sometimes they they get a bad rep when they shouldn't. But I mean, consultants are knowledge providers, and I think at this stage of the uh, what we're looking at, I think having someone come in to provide that knowledge with the understanding that there may be some work ahead depending on you know how we go I think that's a great uh, great great approach great hopefully g everybody can can come all the commissioners that would be great just put it in the yeah. calendar right now as a matter of fact yep. yeah. well, you didn't make it on Valentine's Day so I think you said <coughs> it's, it's a public meeting so the public can come yep. too if they want if they want so. good the excellent thing we recommend is we recommend that the committee vote to continue the subcommittee <laughs> So, so we can actually have the meeting? <laughs> yes. So uh, I think that's a nice segue. Uh, Phil, I think we have a, a, a motion to be made. Yeah, I'll move that uh, the commission uh, continue the uh, appointment of the fiber committee, the fiber subcommittee of the board for the time being on it, you think? For Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. <laughs> How about till after the March meeting? After the March meeting. Yeah. That sounds fine. Okay. Till after the March meeting. Good. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? No, I, I think it's good to, to wrap up committees quickly and, and, and have the board be doing. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So, good. I think that's good. So, yeah. Any other comment? Good. Not appearing. All in favor? Okay. Motion carries 5 0. Zero. Thank you, Phil and Dave. Okay. Uh, so as we uh, have been doing the last couple of meetings, uh, we'd like to get a, uh, an update uh, f at the uh, last uh, Citizens Advisory Committee meeting, and I think Commissioner Hennessy attended the CAB meeting on November 18th. So I did. Can you and give us a report uh, out, Dave, please? Sure. I was impressed. I, I told Dave about this, the efficiency that the CAB runs their meetings. It was <laughs> a pretty tight operation. <laughs> what are you implying? <laughs> 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 we can emulate some of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, <laughs> Chairman. Um, but they approved um, the finance like we had seen in yeah. prior pr uh, presentations and uh, the operational updates. So it was just a brief meeting. We had seen the same things. So yep. I don't think I have anything else to add. To it. Okay. No, and I think to piggyback on what Dave Nelson said, is I think that feature that was recommended at one of our recent board meetings of reporting back, I think that adds a lot of value. It keeps the rest of the commissioners up to date, and I think uh, it, it makes for more uh, value-added me meetings. So that's great. Thank you, Dave. Any other discussion on our CAB uh, meeting? Okay. So <coughs> next uh, we need an approval of board minutes. So, Phil, will you yeah, carry that? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Not appearing. All in favor? Okay. Motion carries 5 0 0. Okay. Motion carries 4 0 0. 4 0 1. 4 0 1. Sorry. Right. I'll get it right. Okay. I'll move that we approve the September 24th, 2015 minutes as presented. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Not appearing. All in favor? Okay. Motion carries 5 zero, 0 Okay. Uh, next, uh, we have general manager's report. Colleen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, 
so far for this fall, uh, I have met with all of the town managers and town administrators um, in that same vein of improving, establishing and improving communications. Uh, met with them, uh, discussed issues that they wanted to discuss, and then we kind of uh, honed in on what they wanted me to present to the, to the selectmen. Um, and so we came up with PowerPoint presentations for each of the towns, and I've since done three of the towns. Um, I have one left, which is next Monday night at Wilmington. But I think, you know, Jane came with me and, and uh, Hamid. I think we had all the answers of the questions they asked. I think the presentations went very well. They were very well received. Uh, we've gotten back to them on all of the questions that they've asked, anything that we couldn't provide there, if they wanted additional data. Like North Reading wanted more data on um, the shutoff lights for the LED. But we talked about uh, double poles, um, you know, a lot of the hot topics, um, and then some updates uh, from the annual meeting and, that, and going forward. So I thought the meetings were very productive, and I appreciate Jane and, and Hamid helping me out on that. Colleen, just to yep. understand the logistics, so this, the meetings are quarterly or semi-annual? How often are, are the meetings? Um, I'm doing them twice a year. Okay. And the reason why I committed to that is because when I first came and we had that um, rate increase, right. you know, people didn't even know me. I showed up out of nowhere and I was right. like, we got to have this. Yeah. Um, and so because we're both fiscal year uh, budget, um, it also, there's no segue into their budget process for when we're doing our evaluation for our rate, any rate increases. So one of the points was to meet in the fall when Jane's done some preliminary. Right. And then when we meet in the spring, we kind of give them, when we do the budget, we'll give a formal number and then that's what they can put in their budget for effective on July 1st. So that's kind of the point of doing it like twice a year. Right. Um, and they, you know, we talked about tree trimming and they have an opportunity to ask all kinds of different questions and, and um, how many meetings, uh, more or less, is that? Because it, it's, it's four towns, essentially, four right? Four towns. So I've done it. Uh, this will be the this was this will be the third time that I've yeah. gone. Around. But you're also having pre-discussions with the town officials. With the town managers yeah. and administrators. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Excellent. Because they like to look at what the presentation is kind of going to look like before I give it to the selectmen and make sure that all their questions are right. in there. Sure. Yeah. Colleen, is there a theme that you've? seen with the town the questions you're getting from the towns is there any themes um, well it starts off with our theme so like the Nissan report is peak performance and then I went back and kind of said you know last year's theme of the get greener go paperless I said you know once we come up with a theme it's not just the theme for the year it's a theme forever and then so now we're adding peak performance so now that's forever and um, and I the slides were on double poles we're using this new thing called engines which everyone that's in ball and court are next to transfer. So you get into a little bit about the poles are owned 50-50, okay, through all the four towns. But the custodial area, for example, Reading is the custodial of um, North Reading and, and, and half of North Reading, right? No, North Reading and half of Reading. And then Verizon has the rest. Mm. And the custodial person, even though we still have a transfer on every pole, is the person that would put in the new pole and take out the pole butt. So they want to know who's holding up these unsightly double poles. So we have to talk about what circuits we're putting in, the, the pole <coughs> inspection. All of these things create more poles. And you know, now that we have a list that they can hold people accountable, you know, um, and I told them, I said, you know, I'll get the list and there'll be a bunch of RMLD. I'll have the guys in the two days before I come talk to you and we'll get them all done and then <laughs> I'm zero. <laughs> and then you can call Verizon in. So, um, you know, we do what it takes. But we, we understand that they are unsightly, but unfortunately they have to understand that everyone has to transfer. Right. But now everybody, Fire, Comcast. So if something's sitting on their list for 20 days, it's you can say, hey, you know, let's go. Right. So there's accountability. The, the engines is not as accurate as we'd like to, so Davies that's going out and collecting the information to build our GIS is providing more accurate data to build this, and Verizon supposedly is doing an audit for other reasons. So we're hoping to make this accurate fairly soon, at least by next year. Thank you. So that's kind of what we talk about. 
they all talk about the pipeline. They all hammered Jane about the pipe, you know, the pipeline that's coming through and how it impacts RMLD or what we think about, you know, whether we really need a pipeline in this area. So we try to stay very um, politically in the middle, right? <laughs> <laughs> no job. Yep. Good. So, so those are going well. One more to go, and then we're going to be starting the budget process um, right after we finish the negotiations. So that's kind of the negotiations and then budget, and, and we start again. So I have a couple of little notes for, uh, from Priscilla. Um, we had the, the holiday tree lighting, which a lot of those lights are donated by RMLD. I thought the square looks beautiful. Yes, it does. And, Ex um, excellent. Down on Haven Street, we had um, we had some of the customer service out there, and we were explaining all of our programs, and they were selling light bulbs and holiday lights for the trees. Uh, we had the trouble truck down there, and um, we did have an ugly sweater contest. We didn't get too many mm -hmm. contestants, but <laughs> these folks right here ended up winning a prize. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, well the deserved. In the, <laughs> yes. the middle, it wasn't a sweater. It was a suit, but it was just... So much better than a sweater. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, they can you won. pass that around? Uh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure we can compete with that. It's going to be tough. <laughs> Wait till I see what I get for Christmas. <laughs> his, tie, his tie match. Wow. And he works for um, Reading Co op Bank. He's very excited. Can I have a copy of this? Of course. <laughs> um, the very nice. The Holiday Lights Decorating Contest. Uh, publicly in local papers on cable TV, emailing parents of school looking for entries. Flyers were taken to pay stations, libraries, and town halls in each of the towns. If you see an unbelievable display of lights, please <coughs> provide Priscilla Gotwell the address and she will get permission from the owners to enter his or her name. I don't know that we have a lot of people signing up, so now we're actually going out and, and trying to uh, go backwards with the address. Um, yeah. We got some pretty good prizes for. Um, for the what the prizes are. Um, she doesn't have the prizes listed down here. I think it's a hundred. Write it on your electric bill. One, um, one winner in each of the four towns. One, one. Okay. Correct. All right. Thank you, Jane. You're so one winner in each of the four towns. A hundred dollars credit on, their on your electric bill. bill. Got it. Does Priscilla um, need addresses? Excuse me. I'm sorry, but. If, yeah. if you see somebody that yep. has a nice display, let her know. Yes. So she'll ask, she'll get a hold of the owner and see if, if they want to participate. Cool. Uh, Reading Senior Center, uh, Jane's group's been doing some outreach um, there and uh, talking about uh, rebates, low income rates, time of use, hot water rates, energy audits uh, in conjunction with the Reading Climate Committee. He's working on a grant with local banks to provide funds to seniors who want to make improvements suggested by the energy auditor to their homes but may not be able to afford it. The Climate Committee has also offered their assistance by being present while audit is made to make the seniors feel comfortable with having someone in their home. So that's a great uh, thing that's happening. So we had our display board and uh, I think the seniors really appreciated it and we'll be doing outreaches in each of the towns, maybe North Reading next. The RMLD tree in the lobby decorated um, uh, by retired RMLD chief engineer Paul Carson, uh, and he's working on his villages and electric trains, much to the delight of visiting customers and their children. The Save Energy campaign uh, have permission from all four school superintendents to contact the principals uh, in our service territory for the LED Save Energy campaign where each school body will against the other schools to purchase LED bulbs from RMLD's online store. When purchasing, they will be asked which school they support. Whichever school purchases the most bulbs or power strips will win the contest. There will be a winning school in each town and they will receive $2,000 towards Energy Star equipment. Nice. And then finally, uh, we have the t-shirt contest. The winners have been chosen. Photo photography and design and process printing will be done for the award ceremony scheduled for Thursday, January 7th. The board and myself will present to the winning students. This is a well-attended popular event um, where you have all the students, parents, teachers, and principals, and superintendents. So that is, I feel like Saturday Night Live. That's, that's my update. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Lots, lots of nice things happening. Yeah. So any questions for Colleen? 
All right, uh, next we have the power supply report. Jane? Okay, yep. Um, basically, October was a good month. I have three slides that kind of look at what, what the energy market did. Uh, this first slide depicts the day ahead and the real time LMPs for the month of October. Um, the day ahead prices, we peaked on October 19th at a price of $63.68. Um, and then, oh, excuse me, the peak was at 81. 81 to 87 at 7 p.m. on that day um, on the real uh, for the day ahead on the real time uh, which is the blue blue line here on the on the graph um, those prices dipped to eleven dollars and sixty three cents as the average uh, with a low price of a negative one hundred and thirty eight dollars at five a.m. on that date uh, the rest of the month is uh, close with the day ahead and the real time tracking each other um, and there's not much variance there. The next slide looks at uh, the three years, October of 2013, 14, 15. Um, and again, it looks, um, these are day ahead prices. So the highest price for this three year period occurred on October 19th of 2015. Um, and that daily average was $63.68. Um, the lowest price occurred in 2014, uh, and that was at an average daily price of $19.15. Um, and in October of 13, the price was pretty pretty sta uh, stable. It didn't fluctuate as much as 14 and 15 did. Um, in 2015, the day ahead's average price was around $37. Um, was slightly higher than in 2014, which was 32, and in 2013 it was 33. Uh, one of the things we should note in October is um, one of our one of the nuclear plants, Seabrook, was on refueling outage, uh, so that can sometimes tend to cause prices to be slightly higher because we have a, a low cost baseload unit that's not available. Right. Yeah. Uh, the final graph that I have shows the real time prices uh, for the, the same three year period, uh, 13, 14, and 15. Um, and uh, in the real time, we hit a peak of $51.54 uh, that occurred in 2014. Um, uh, once again, the real time prices, uh, the low was uh, occurred on October 26th of this current year, uh, and that was $11.63 for the average day. And overall, the real time market appears to be um, a little more unpredictable. Uh, there's more volatility in the real time, than, and that's to be expected. Um, and that was really especially true in uh, 2014 uh, versus 2015. Uh, the average in 2015 was around $33, so that was comparable to the day ahead. Um, and in 2014, it was around 30, and in 2013, it was 35. Um, just, to, just to let the commission know, uh, our fuel charge for the average year, if you look at the calendar year, um, when we compare 2014 to 2015, what our actual customers were paying, uh, there uh, was a decrease of about 6.2 cents, and that's reflective of market, the portfolio, the energy costs that we have, and the drop in natural gas. So that's a direct pass-through that the customers, when they look at their fuel charge, it's actually 6.2% less than what it was in 2014. That's great. Yeah. Good. That concludes my report. Okay. So next, uh, we have the commercial lighting <coughs> program. Yeah. Um, um, today, I have two of my integrated resource engineers that are going to present to you. Um, Teresa Shakespeare has been with the company for about three years. Um, she started up as the key account manager, working with the commercials, and we've kind of restructured our area. Um, and with her is Raul Shaw, and he's uh, focusing on the energy efficiency program. And Raul started with us in May of this year. Hmm. Good. So welcome. Uh, welcome. Yeah, welcome to both of you. Thanks Thank for you coming. Much. With the permission of the board, I would like to speak. Yes, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rahul. I'm the Integrated Resource Engineer uh, in the Integrated Resource Department. And uh, do we have? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. <coughs> Screen. Was that you, Jane, or was that you skydiving? Oh, that was Raul. Oh, <laughs> I would
right, so as we can uh, see on the screen, um, our commercial lighting retrofit program is available for all non-residential customers. We include commercial, industrial, and municipal customers uh, with you know, accounts with RMLD that are in uh, accounts in good standing. And we have a very customized approach where uh, with, with almost every lighting project where we work with the, with the customer from beginning to end, sort of walking them through the entire approach so they also feel connected to us. At the same time, you know, if they have any question, we are easily reachable. So there is no ambiguity or there is you know, nothing that uh, they don't know about. And uh, as we can see, that uh, the right now the current cap is $20,000 per calendar year, but that's not to exceed 50% uh, of the total project cost. And uh, just want to mention that uh, historically the cap was uh, $10,000 and uh, it, was updated, uh, uh, it was updated in April this year to $20,000. So customers, m uh, customers can take uh, advantage of this because uh, one of the reason is uh, the prices of LEDs now are a little higher than the regular fluorescent lights. So this would really help them and uh, we are incentivizing LEDs at this point uh, because they are the most efficient, they are most reliable and they are also a huge reduction in maintenance costs, especially for the commercial customers. And we have basically, we sort of follow the four step process here uh, first they submit the application, then we do the inspection. After um, inspection, they install, then there is verification. At the end, there is uh, incentive payments, which is basically a very easy pr process for customers. So they find it very helpful and useful. And uh, one point that our incentive are strictly based on the demand reduction um, due to the capacity and transmission charges on the wholesale side. So sort of trying to keep it, you know, aligning aligning with uh, what will help our company as well. And with that, I would like to pass it on to Tirza. Thank you. Thank you very, very good. Good evening, I'm Tirza Shakespeare and I will be speaking on the program as well. Um, just to follow a note of what Raul was speaking to, um, our program covers LED products and it must be Energy Star certified. Um, for our grants and uh, program updates, just a little bit of background as to the update that we went through in uh, April of 2015. Um, back in 2013-2014, uh, RMLD was awarded the MLP LED grant from the DOER, which uh, gave us 250000 in funds, of which 75000 was dedicated to our commercial customers. Um, we used this mon money to um, assist them in these projects. Basically, what we did was our incentive, which at the time was a $10,000 cap, we actually doubled it to the $20,000 cap. Um, the prescriptive rebates, which I will talk about in a moment, um, were also doubled, which allowed the customers to achieve that $20,000. And it gave them that incentive push to move on to LEDs, which um, kind of broke through the barrier of the higher cost of the LEDs. The program was updated in 2000, um, April of 2015, following the industry standards and the fluorescent traditional lighting phase out. Um, I know that's been kind of talked about a few times, but basically where the traditional lighting was the fluorescent tubular lighting, we've gone to the LED, which is the solid state lighting, which is for sustainability as well as environmental. Um, the program now offers prescri prescriptive LED incentives as well as customized incentives. The customized incentives are on a case-by-case -case basis, and as Raul mentioned before, incentives are based on our peak demand reduction. And here you have our standard table of prescriptive incentives. This is available on the RMLD website for all our customers. This kind of has a broad spectrum of LED categories where right now on the market there are a lot of LEDs available to the customer. So unfortunately we weren't able to list every single one of them, but we like to <coughs> give them categories so that they understand how to qualify. And again, as Raul was saying, we walk the customer through it. So the customer will contact us in the beginning or we encourage them to contact us in the beginning with the application process so that we can walk them through, let them know what fixtures will qualify and also letting them know, you know, kind of what fixtures are gonna be cost beneficial to them as well. Um, we cover everything from the LED substitute lighting, this is where they can put a light in and actually bypass the original ballast, versus the LED uh, whole new fixture where they're actually literally gutting the fixture and putting up a whole new one. So um, the incentives range anywhere from $25 per fixture all the way up to um, 
$150 to $350 per fixture. We cover interior, exterior. Each lighting does have a criteria, again, set um, in standards by our peak demand reduction. We also cover photo cells and sensors. And on the customized basis, that would be literally looking at um, our larger commercial, commercial customers that uh, do these installments in bulk. Um, they have um, a max number of uh, fixtures that they uh, can't really qualify for the prescriptive because once we put it prescriptive, you know, they're well over that $20,000 cap. So mm -hmm. we like to look at them on a customized basis and see what they're actually doing for that demand peak reduction. <coughs> um, and here we have some numbers from fiscal year 2015. Uh, as you can see, more than 30 commercial and industrial customers partic participated in the, in the program. The, incent the total amount of incentive was more than $200,000 from the conservation fund, and the energy saving, which, which I think is pretty incredible, was uh, over 1.1 million an annual kilowatt hours, and the demand reduction of uh, 300 kilowatts um, that is from those projects, and this is just continuing. So that with that update, uh, I would like to conclude. And can I ask a question? Yes, uh, please. Uh, do you find that um, there are more industrial or commercial uh, or retail customers uh, that are taking advantage of the program? Is it weighted one versus the other, do you find? I would say um, a lot of the commercials definitely do take advantage a little bit more often than the industrials. Um, the industrials, not to say that they won't, it's just usually they um, – usually are not aware that there's an incentive because they're doing it more on a maintenance basis. They're uh. doing it to cut costs on their end and not even realizing that it's actually an energy efficiency practice as well. Sure. On the smaller commercials, they are looking at it from the maintenance standpoint, but they're also looking at it from cutting costs on their electric bill. So they are looking at it from energy efficiency standpoint. So definitely um, we have a good amount of small commercials, but definitely that medium-sized commercial is the ones that take advantage of the most. Seems like a great program. I, mean, Absolutely, I, I yeah. can't believe that everyone wouldn't take advantage right. of it. Right? <laughs> That's why we are trying to uh, we are trying to work uh, more diligently with every customer, and I personally take that opportunity to create a relationship so mm -hmm. that you know even if they're doing anything else down the road, they can still contact us and sort of we can stay in touch. Right. And to speak to Raul's point, that's exactly how we initiate relationships. A lot of times we'll have a small commercial customer contact us, you know, based off of um, their bill. They want to see how they can reduce it. And we'll mention lighting because it tends to be the low-hanging fruit for mm -hmm. them. And they keep on with that relationship. They'll come back and say that they have a rooftop unit or a compressor or any type of HVAC equipment, and they want to know if that qualifies. Mm -hmm. And we let them know, absolutely, that qualifies as well. So we oh. have a couple of different programs, but the lighting program is definitely our biggest segue into all our other programs. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so Tizu and Raul, that was wonderful. Uh, I agree with John. and It's uh, very positive. Is, is there a, a piece of this where you actually go out to the customers, or is it done – uh, you know, well how does how do you work it? Do you actually do site visits to the customers? Is that actually um, she can speak more? But I, I think it's combination of both it's with with the customer that we already have existing relationship. Yeah. For example, if I'm if I go there for a meeting and if I see some old lights, I mean I would just you know probably bring out the question and understand what yeah. what they're currently doing. Mm -hmm. And if it's a new customer, they come to us and you know we create the platform and then take it from there. Um, and if you have more to yeah, add on absolutely. That. As a part of our uh, validation process, um, I, I like what Raul was saying, if it's a newer customer that we haven't had a relationship with, we do take that opportunity to go out and we'll take a look at their lighting because we do want to verify what was existing. Um, even if it's a new commercial customer where they're doing a new build where there's nothing existing, we'll take that opportunity to meet who the facilities managers are and be uh, give an RMLD presence there. Um, but we do absolutely do. We do an, a pre-inspection and a post-inspection. So a lot of times we'll only waive an inspection if we have a pre-existing relationship with the customer and there's photos that they can verify the, the work was installed. No, I, and I think that's, you know, the to establish customer relations in, in, in this business, RMLD, there aren't, there's not a sales force per se. So you you two are really kind of functioning in that capacity you know, in, in a positive way, being able to uh, get to understand the needs of the customer, which is a lot easier to do face to face and, and also to see what the opportunities are. So that's great. Now, will this continue into uh, into the next uh, calendar year? Absolutely. We, um, we use the funding from our conservation energy funds. Um, so it's a, it's a rolling account. We um, definitely are trying to make you well use of those dollars. So absolutely, for until further notice, the programs are still running. Good. 
Okay, can, uh, can the RMLD take advantage of the program too? I seem to notice a lot of fluorescence here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we should be changing those too, right? <laughs> How about the incandescence? <laughs> yeah, the incandescence, right. Okay. Good. Any other questions from Phil? Yeah, just one item. I, I, you talked about strengthening the relationship with the CAB. I had actually seen this presentation the CAB. That's why I suggested to bring it to the board. And, yeah. uh, you know, to get more, uh, get it distributed wider so more yeah. people know. Well, that's why I thought it yeah, was a great. idea to come to the board and have this. Yeah, they're good, excellent. I wasn't even aware of it. That's, yeah. thank you yep. very much. Thank you. Yep. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank good you. good thank job. You. Good evening. Should we dim the lights or you? Nope. Okay. Nope. Just, just one slide update. Okay. Our, um, Tom Malil has been working diligently on this. Um, he's been on jury duty, um, so that's why he prepared oh the slide and I'm updating yeah. it for the board. Um, but we're looking at a solar choice program. We're gathering information from uh, the MAP COER, the MAPC, consultants, developers, and other munis on uh, community solar concepts. Uh, we've selected power management as our community solar subject matter expert, and they're helping us immensely in terms of putting together the project specs, um, helping us with the RFP to go out, um, helping us with setting up criteria to do the evaluation, project management, et cetera. They've worked with several uh, municipal, not necessarily municipal light plants, but they've worked with the city of Randolph, Quincy, um, the list is endless in terms of soliciting uh, for solar power and having them put on municipal buildings such as schools and town buildings. Um, so they've been extremely helpful with us in terms of helping us through the process. Uh, so right now we're in the process of finalizing the project specs um, and, and with the hope of issuing the RFP to select a solar developer, owner, operator. Um, the, the, the ultimate winner will be owning the system so they can take advantage of the tax incentive credit, uh, credits and as a utility will take the off, off take of that power, um, they need the SREX in order to make the project profitable, um, and the towns will get um, personal property taxes as well as a lease payment. Mm. And so we're trying to set up the RFP so that both it's advantageous for the RMLD in terms of the lowest rate, as, as well as the towns for the, that, those two components of the um, personal property tax component as well as a lease program. Um, right now, Tom's working diligently and we're looking at a site within all four communities um, to evaluate and then there's no obligation for any of the towns to, to go forward or not, but at least it will give them the information that they will need in order to make an informed decision. Um, so we're, we're, we're um, incorporating that into the RFP. He's working uh, with Wilmington right now He's met with them on uh, three or four occasions as well as um, with the CAB, with uh, George and Dennis. Um, and what they're doing is they're in the process of developing a master plan for all their public buildings. Um, so as a result of that, um, we've kind of scaled back. They don't really want us to look at the rooftops, but they want us to focus on solar canopy. Hmm. Uh, there's a couple of sites there that we're, we're, we're focusing in on, um, and that's about 500 kilowatt um, estimate right now, which would be a good starting point in order to get the program going. Um, uh, additionally, we're also looking at solar canopies um, in Reading at, the, at, at some of the sites. Um, again, to just present the information, there's no obligation for any of the towns, um, and he's meeting with North Reading and Winfield to determine what sites can be included in the RFP. Um, so the next step is just to finalize the sites with, uh, for the, each of the four towns. Uh, we're gonna issue the RFP and gather bids from the solar developers. Uh, we're going to use power management to review the bids, uh, finalize the initial solar array sites, and hopefully award a winner of, of the RFP. And we hope that, uh, again, in order to take advantage of the uh, solar rec incentives uh, and the tax incentives, uh, the project needs to be completed by December 31st of 2016. After that point, there's no assurance that the tax incentives and then the economics change considerably. Um, so we're really pushing forward. Um, we hope to get the RFP out soon and then share the results with all the four towns that, um, that we get. Is there any uh, downside to this? It sounds like a win-win for everybody involved. I mean, in terms of economics, each one of the towns, then it sounds as if they become a generator. 
of electricity. No, correct? no, because because we're uh, subject, not subject to deregulation. Um, the only way we can do this is if R and D takes the offtake of that. <coughs> um, so we can't have solar developers serve the towns because that would infringe on our um, ability for um, franchise. For franchise. 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 Okay. Franchise. Um, so the win is. You know, they're, they're looking at some space. Uh, a lot of the DPW from the towns and conversations like the idea of solar canopy because they, can, they won't have to plow that area because it will be protected. Mm -hmm. um, it allows them to, um, to park vehicles there. Um, they get that additional tax benefit for the towns. And then we're, we're structuring, we're looking at structuring the community solar where customers will have the ability to lock in a piece of their power supply at a Got fixed it. rate okay. for a 10 or 20 year period. Right. Um, and so again, it, it, it's very exciting. I think there's a lot of advantages to it and we're hoping, we're hoping it's a successful program. Yeah. So Jane, just to follow up what you said, so what, what customers would potentially be beneficiaries? Would they be only commercial customers? And no, only we're, looking, we're looking to, to roll this out. We're looking to utilize municipal space right now. Yep. I mean, I, 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 if, if this doesn't work out, we could go into uh, industrial parks and whatnot, but I think what we want to do is to make it a win-win for the light department as well as yep. the towns that, mm -hmm. that we serve. Um, any, we're, we're looking on focusing on residential customers initially. Um, the thought process is the people, uh, we're going to phase out green choice because right now, those customers are paying, you know, three dollars for every block, and now they're going to just support rec someplace that we, you know, in the New England region, primarily in Massachusetts. So we, the first option would be given to those choice, uh, those customers yep. that are signed up for our green choice, and then we would have kind of a lottery system, and then a waiting list for for phase the next phase of the process. Hmm. So that's kind of the initial thought process, um, but that's still evolving as as we move forward and once we know the pricing, it'll be more interesting. Good, so this probably something to be useful to provide an update, you know, going forward at the Correct. board meeting. Yeah, Correct. good. Any mm -hmm. other Just comments? a quick question. What, sure. what, are the, uh, what are the possible canopy sites in Reading? Um, I think when we initially talked, when, a, when we were working very closely with the MACC and they were at evaluating some initial thoughts, um, I think they looked at the high school, and they also looked at the train station, uh, those, and then they also looked at the Burbank Arena. Um, and so again, Tom would probably be more involved. So that again, one of the one of the issues is it, in terms of the, the developer has to be able to visit the site in order to determine what can be put on in order to do the numbers. Um, and so I know. Uh, with Reading, they're, they're really short staffed with some people, so they didn't really have the time to let people into the building, so we're focusing on outside sites. Um, and so I'll have to review with Tom, but I think those, from my recollection, those were the three sites. The, the Burbank Arena, uh, the train station, and the high school. Yeah, I just asked because there was email traffic a few weeks ago that it was unclear whether there was any sites that the town wanted us to be looking at. Even I, I think the, my understanding, the concern was the personnel to, to, t to go through the buildings and get no, on the I get, roof yeah, yeah. to look at that. So I think um, the way we've looked at it is if it's an outside site, there's no personnel needed. And again, it's information. And there's no obligation sure. by anybody to move forward in any manner with any of the sites. Right. Just so just so we're clear, the town hall is fine with us doing evaluation on the high school parking lot, the Burbank Arena, and the... We'll confirm that. <laughs> That was the thing that was unclear to me from all those emails that were going around a few weeks ago. Well, the living next to the train station, I suggest we, we, we if we do anything with those, that we uh, discuss with the neighbors in that, in that neighborhood. <laughs> again, we're nowhere near that. Yeah. There's no, we're, again, right. this is just an, uh, There's no commitment. There's no commitment yeah. from anybody right now. It's just data. And I guess without data, it's difficult for people to make an informed decision. And so all we're providing right. is data. And so if there's, we're working with North Reading to, to identify sites. Um, and so if there's any community out there that wants us to look at particular sites, you know, we encourage <coughs> them to get in touch with us and we'll reach out to them. If, if, they're, they're, um, if there's a sense that they don't want to look at any sites, that's not a problem from our perspective. So we'll, 
we're definitely, we're not trying to push this down, push this forward as if there's no interest. So, um. Jane, would it, uh, it uh, two questions, I guess. Would it make sense uh, at the right time maybe to publish a press release that would articulate kind of really what you're saying, what the plan is, uh, because I think what happens uh, in, on a lot of these issues, uh, things get spoke or misspoke, and uh, a press release would be a good way to kind of document I think Colleen, it. Colleen's been including this in, in her presentations um, in going over to the, when yep. we talk to the selectmen, yeah. and I don't think if we, if we if the board's recommendation is to do a press release of what our intentions are, I think that's – Yeah, I guess maybe, you know, you guys are closer to it. I, suggest considering it only because I think absent that what happens is people misstate or miscommunicate or they hear something and uh, you know it's a good way I think to keep the town and people formed and, and also uh, if people have questions you don't have to gin something up because you've already pr provided it so that would be I don't know if are the commissioners have other no, thoughts. I think so that's a good idea I, you know emails are always always misinterpreted yeah uh, no matter who receives them yeah. So I think uh, uh, being very explicit about what you're doing is a yeah. good idea. You know, because there's a range of responses. You know, some people could say, gee, I didn't, no one told me about that. Or, you know, <laughs> people told me it was going to be this. Or I thought that was only for this town. So I just think it, it uh, I think it's exciting. So I, I, I don't say it as yeah. a, you know, cover, yeah. cover anything up. It's more just, uh, I think we get so many exciting things happening. And there is definitely, a, as there is in, in all our businesses, there's an information overload. So. Uh, the other problem with emails is it's unclear how many really get read, <laughs> and how many and get understood. And just to reiterate, I don't think the intent is not to do four towns at the yeah. same time. It's a pilot, and yeah. I, I, I believe the we, we need to start with one, and Tom's yeah. been working very closely with Wilmington, and there's been yeah. an acceptance by w Wilmington for us to move forward. Yeah. Um, we just want to get some more data at the time. Yeah. And again, sure. Um, yeah. But just what you said, I think that's a great story for people so they don't okay. think it's happening otherwise. Sure. So, yeah. So that's good. I think that what, and Jane, what, uh, what sort of the, maybe it's too early, but what, what kind of opportunity is this, you know, from a financial benefit point of view? Is it too from early from to? From the RMLD's point, this is really a win win situation um, from my perspective yeah. uh, because um, this gives customers the ability to secure a fixed amount of their cost structure. Right. So it takes some of the volatility out. Right. Um, and from the light de department's perspective, um, we still obtain that base revenue. Um, and what we're doing is we're just allocating a certain piece of the power supply portion to a class of customers. Um, so unlike when people put solar on their individual roof. Yeah. Sometimes people don't have the right roof, you know, it's facing the wrong direction or yeah. they just don't have the capital to do it. So it allows uh, the economics for people <coughs> to participate who may not be able to participate uh, because it's on a much, yeah. it's a bigger scale, but it's not on their roof. Um, and so I think it's really a win-win situation and we're very excited about getting a pilot going yeah. and being able to evaluate that and, and the yeah. success of that. Yeah, so uh, I guess I, I'd say out loud uh, we certainly support it and uh, think it's a great, uh, a great yeah, initiative. Been doing, he's really been leading this. He's been doing yeah, a, well, a great job. Yeah, and no, I'll let him know we appreciate that because I think uh, it, it's, uh, it's the right stuff and, and the pilot's definitely the right strategy. I just want to make sure I understand something. So December 2016 is when we, if, if things are installed and plugged in by then, then it can work. After that, we don't know. At this time, we don't know. Right. Because the tax incentive right. is starting. Got it. The Congress would have to do something, which is always a, a long shot. Um, so if it's a pilot, presumably the pilot could get done in 2016, but then as a, as a de facto, the, the, the actual practical result would be that's all that would get done if the tax incentives expire because you're not going to do a pilot and then do more in the same space of 10 months, right? So when you say it's going to be a pilot, we'll see how it works. That means if the tax is going to expire, that's all that will happen, right? If it, if, the, if it expires, it may not expire. Okay. I mean, uh, something may occur to put it in right. place depending on 
Well, it depends on the timing, right? I mean, uh, if the pilot works, then you don't need to do four pilots. Correct. Right? And, and, and every, every location will be different, and depending on when they do it, the market changes, and the market is what drives the costs that the, that the suppliers bid in. Well, right, but I mean, the tax incentives are really the deal killer here. So I guess I'm just trying to understand what does it mean to say there's going to be a pilot, but then maybe something will happen later if we already know that if it doesn't get done in the next few months, it's economically impossible. Yeah, it's not just the pilot, um, uh, the tax incentives, you know, the SREC, what right. the state's going to do with the SREC market. Um, right now there's a cap on it. Uh, um, so if, you know, the legislature changes that or if legislation doesn't pass, that has a really big impact on the economics. So and even if the tax incentive was to expire? Was to be renewed, and then the state of Massachusetts did something with their renewable market, that could play into it. So there's many moving factors. Got it. All right. I, I just, my impression was that this, ur this is urgent for the four towns to say now because we may not have another shot at this. That's, that was my understanding up until now, that it was 2016 or pretty much this is not going to be possible. So that is that a misimpression? It, it, it th that's what I. Uh, I always look at the glass half full. So well, I mean, the glass, it's, like it's, it's not half full half. It's half not half full or half empty. It's the tax incentives are, are expiring. So it's like that's it, it is what fact. it is. That's so, a fact. Correct. so I guess I'm wondering how is is it clear to all four towns that it's now or never on this, which is what it seems to be um, with these well, tax incentives. Yeah, but you're you're making the assumption that they will ex right. expire, but they will be renewed. But we don't know that. We or, don't know that. Or something could replace them. That's a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. Or, so. or the price could go down. Like the, the material could go down. Yeah, but the material is the least of it, though, as you know. I mean, from the insulation and all the rest of it is the. I think you have a better idea after November of 2016. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and my other final thing, and I'll we'll get off this, but you, you say in your slide that Reading asked that only solar canopy parking lots be considered. So, <coughs> what, <coughs> but the next line says the same thing. Reading asked that only solar canopy parking. Supervise the town's facility staff right. with time involvement. Right. So Reading has asked that only solar canopy. So Reading has asked. Tom's been working. Okay. Tom has been involved in this, and I apologize. Um, that he's not here. But okay. So he, that he, he created the slides for, for the presentation. Okay. So. All right. So I just want to make sure, because I'm only asking because we had a whole bunch of email traffic a few weeks ago, and the town manager was, it sounded like, didn't want didn't want to do this anywhere in the town, which is perfectly fine for him to say. But I'm, that's different than what that says, which is Reading asked that solar canopy parking lots, you know, would be, would be, considered. That's what it says. So I'm just trying to understand what's going on in Reading. Uh, Tom perhaps could address it in our next meeting. Correct. Yeah. yeah or clarify with an email later, because there was a whole bunch of people that wanted to know the answer to this, and I thought we were going to get some clarity tonight, and now it's like we don't have the clarity. So. It would be nice I, to get. I apologize. That's okay. I mean, it, it's just that's the that was one of the key questions that was not clear was was there an open lot that Reading was okay with us getting a price on. Well, so. does Tom off jury any idea? Do you? Uh, the judge had told him because he had sued a previous trial, um, so um, I'm in touch with him though, and I, I, I will clarify that. Yeah. Why don't we get? Yeah. Yeah, and okay. I think to John's point, I think since this looks like, you know, and I, I agree with Dave and John in the respect that I, you know, th there's lots of things in play, so we don't want to, on the one hand, we don't want to, uh, uh, we don't want to miss an opportunity, so the only way you can do that is with the facts before us, uh, here's the situation, and let's get things moving, mm -hmm. so I think Tom is probably someone that maybe in a future meeting could come, and it, it, when we do an update could also provide that, but uh, if you can answer that, that would be great, Jim. Okay, good. Dave, any other things from you? Oh, it would just be good to know what the answer to that question is. You know, where does Reading stand on this? And that's what I did, we didn't know before, and I guess we still don't know, so it would be good to find out. Okay, good. All right, any other questions? Uh, Jane, did you have anything else you wanted? That completes my report. Okay, Thank excellent. You Thank well. you. Thank you. It's good stuff, all good stuff. Uh, Amid, front and center. Uh, front and side, I'm sorry. Front and side, right. <coughs> You're going to do the engineering report, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Amit. Okay. Control panel project projector. 
display projector. Oh, I see. Yeah. One, one page out of uh, sync. Thirty-two. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Great. Uh, capital improvement projects. Uh, we got three categories: construction projects, uh, new customer service connections, and special projects. So. Uh, on the right, you see the percent completion status for uh, those projects. Some of those are near, uh, they were near uh, completion, uh, and some are ongoing, and the other ones, uh, as you see, like uh, the 4W5, 4W6 tie on Summer Street in Reading, they picked up. So uh, those are all the dollar values that uh, happened in the month of uh, October and year to date on the far right column. The next uh, slide uh, talks about uh, routine construction, which in the month of October, we spent about uh, $132,160, that bring in year to date to $500,437. And uh, the next sli slide under the routine maintenance, we got uh, those categories. Uh, I, I got good news, uh, I mean, the, the maintenance program is going very well and we're making some progress. In the month of October, we replaced more pad mount transformers, the ones that they were close to or we were targeted as potential release of oil. And uh, we changed a few of those, uh, as well as the overhead uh, transformers. Uh, in the pole inspection programs, uh, you know, we had 132 poles uh, that have been replaced. So all of those ugly double poles that you see, it's a result of these pole inspection, mm -hmm. which I'd like to thank all the rate payers for their patience in all four communities, yeah. because we're doing them either for the construction improvements uh, to the system or for the safety reasons. And this is in this case, it's really for the safety. And um, uh, we do the best we can trying to you know, get off those poles and pass them on to the next entity at Verizon or Comcast, so to uh, do the transfers. Uh, visual inspection of the overhead lines, you have the list of those, you see that, you know, this is another program that quarterly we inspect them to uh, catch any potential failures, any uh, unforeseen conditions that have been going on and we need to, they need to be corrected or addressed. The manhole inspection is pending, uh, part of it, we're doing it as a, of a routine construction. The others, uh, we're waiting for the GIS data to be collected and completed so we know what we have. And while we open up the manholes, then we take pictures and we inspect all the assets and see what conditions they are. So that's picking up actually in 2016 uh, as we're collecting more data from the manholes. The porcelain cutouts, we're making really good progress on those, almost 91% completed. We got about 263 that are remaining to be replaced. The tree trimming is going very well. Uh, knock on wood, we haven't had any complaints. And it looks like the people are getting used to the you know, program and it's going well. Uh, and substation maintenance, it's, uh, we do infrared scanning of the equipment at the substations every month. So far, uh, we haven't had any problems. We also do quarterly inspection of the parks and uh, because those are our big customers and we haven't had any signs of trouble. Uh, the next slide, the double poles, as Colin mentioned, we got about 16,000 poles in uh, our system. 35% belong to RMLD, 65% to Verizon, and uh, while RMLD has the custodial of the poles in Reading, half in Reading and uh, North Reading, Verizon has a custodial in Linfield and Wilmington. Uh, the next poll shows that uh, the program that we share with Comcast and Verizon engines, uh, basically for every town, Reading, North Reading, Linfield, and Wilmington, in Reading, it shows that the, there are 69 double poles or 60 poles, the 61 that needs either transfer or need to be removed or, uh, you know, for uh, other various reasons they've been uh, installed. 
uh, we got 18 in North Reading, Linfield, we got 26, and Wilmington is uh, 206. This is a dynamic process, really. As much as I know everybody would like to know exactly how many polls, double polls you have, I mean, because we are going as we adding uh, to the system, to the plant value, and we are making improvements to the system, you're going to see these numbers fluctuating. So it's not like, you know, in one snapshot, you could tell exactly how many polls you have. And plus some of the polls that you see in that category, they're, they're sole owned by Verizon. And, you know, those are the ones that, you know, well, it has nothing to do with us. But as you could see in those categories, the ones that we need to do the transfers, we pretty much are uh, catching up with other transfers. When you say transfer, does that mean transfer from Verizon to? No, the, uh, transfer from the old polls to the new polls. Oh, new polls. Because okay. when you set the new poll for the next to the old poll, the, the each entity needs to do the transfer and then goes into the ball is going to be in the next entity's uh, uh, court in order to take care of that. And immediately, my guys, uh, the staff, the what they do, they do the transfers, the one that, that they, they need to be done right away. And they, they start from the oldest getting to the newest that, you know, they have a system that, you know, in place to take care of those. There aren't many of those that we have. Mostly it's Verizon. We don't have any control, unfortunately, in Verizon setting programs for them. They're trying to get out of the poll business. And then, you know, that's another subject. Uh, so... Um, uh, but we're maintaining the ones that we know we, we are responsible for, again, for public safety and employee safety both. And uh, it's a good program. I'm really proud of that program. I'm glad we started that, and it's, 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 it's great. Uh, so good. so this any questions? Great. So that's the engine programs. The next slide, basically, you see the uh, reliability indices, SADI, KD, and SAFI. Uh, unfortunately, we exceeded the regional and local indices, and the reason for that was that uh, uh, August 4th and 5th storm that we had uh, some damages to the lines and our infrastructures that made in Linfield area and Reading. So that's why the numbers jumped up. Uh, I compare them always to blood pressure. You know, when you go to doctors and all of a sudden your blood pressure, you get nervous, it goes up. <laughs> And so these are the blood pressure of our system, basically. With one shock, they go up. They all go up. And uh, then they come back down. Uh, so Was this from, like, branches and whatnot? That were this is the down? two trees that they came, huge trees that they came down uh, on the Main Main Street. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, Shane Ave Ave in, Re in, uh, in uh, Linfield. Or Linfield. Basically, that's where the big damages were. But they stayed out for almost, you know, some customers almost to two days. And they so had those old Verizon poles. They have the old line. Verizon poles that, you know, again, we haven't been really maintained. Uh, like what I said, Verizon doesn't do the maintenance. And uh, I'm grateful that, you know, we have that opportunity. And Colleen has given us permission to really to uh, go ahead and, you know, for the safety respect the polls and continue along those lines for public safety yep. so and that's why we implemented the, these uh, uh, maintenance programs just sure. to protect our assets and make sure uh, that you know the, the public safety and employee safety are not jeopardized so basically that's that's the story for those so the solid colors the pink that you see in previous uh, slide as much as Jane would like me to uh, fast forward. <laughs> 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 She's anxious, you know, you could tell that. You know? <laughs> so as Bob, Bob is sitting right corner. <laughs> 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 but the solid colors that you see pink, it's without the storm, if you take the, the, the don't take the, the storm data into account. And uh, those dash boxes right on top of those are representative of what the numbers would be if you include the storms. So, so that's the story for my indices. I guess we can go to the next now. Thank you. Uh, the next slide shows uh, basically the outage causes, which the majority of the equipment, trees, and the wildlife. We have increased the wildlife uh, installation of the system, but like what Colin explained uh, the other day very well, Although we covered them, but you know we covered them for uh, squirrel contact, but the birds they find a way to go through the holes, and you know they <laughs> so you <laughs> there's no win with with those, but we try to do.
do the best we can trying to cover all the exposed parts so save animals from electrocution as well as you know reliability of the system so basically that concludes my report if you have any questions i'll be more than happy to answer those questions if you have good uh, any questions for phil <coughs> fell over, so I think it's very important that we keep the pole inspections going. Yes. I believe in the town of Braintree, a, a pole actually just fell over, collapsed on its own. Oh, wow. Wow. System. So, and it's not <coughs> in the news that caused a major outage, I believe. So yeah, and that's, that's why we're concerned pole. about the Verizon owned poles and they're if they're not getting the right level of maintenance on the exactly. poles. Exactly. Where's the liability lie? I mean, is it with the Verizon? The man himself was on the TV. Is that right? Yes. Mm. Yes, yes, go on. Um, so Hamid and I will be doing an update on the organizational and reliability study, the recommendations oh, right, right. in January. So just to let you know right. that's coming. Oh, good. Okay. And uh, also to ask permission, is since Hamid's sitting up there, do you want to jump to the bids and just get them out of the way? Sure. Okay. Bob, you're okay with that? <laughs> okay. I'd let Bob yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Right. Yes. No, I think that works well. Okay. Yes, please, Phil. Okay. Move that bid 2016 13 for the sale of surplus electric meters be awarded to Vision Metering LLC for a total cost of $8,873.50. Second. Okay. Discussion? Any questions for Hamid? How many meters is there? There's 17,000 meters uh, total together, uh, uh, almost. And uh, we had 10 <coughs> bidders. Four were uh, basically they submitted the bid. Two of them were disqualified because they didn't meet the requirements, like the bid deposit. And one of them came in late after 11 o'clock, which was to, to, uh, disqualified. But two were qualified which were they were very close the prices one was 40 cents a piece the other one was 50 cents a piece so the bid is going to the highest how bid. much was the one who was the day late i'm i'm not sure i don't have that data i once they disqualify we don't we just put put them aside the one that you know for uh, i think there was one that didn't meet the qualifications for the bid deposit i don't uh, exactly remember how much was that but okay how much do these cost new the cost of the new one is it's all day well. Back then it was like $29, $30 each. Uh, but now we go to the different it, generation, well which is AMI, which the price could vary anywhere from $150 to $300, depending on what, uh, a from $80 to $130 to uh, $250, depending on the type that you know you select and the application for commercials. So. But I'd like to get rid of these so we have to open up some spaces because I I'm replacing the breakers at station four. These are obsolete breakers that need, should have been replaced 10 years ago, but now we're getting to them and trying to replace them. I wasn't here 10 years ago, so. <laughs> 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 so, but uh, we are uh, gonna be replacing this week, uh, actually for the next two weeks. We're going to be replacing uh, 27 breakers, upgrading them to Siemens breaker. These are the best, mm -hmm. which is safest, and you know that's going to uh, increase the re reliability and the safety. And I need to store those in place of the meters. That's why we get rid of these sooner, so we can open up space for the Barbers building. Uh, any other discussion? Are we ready for a motion? A vote. All in favor? Okay. Motion carries five zero zero. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, Amit. Thank you. Okay, Bob, you're on. For the financial report. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Before I start the uh, October financials, I'd like to introduce uh, Wendy Markowitz in, in the back row over there. I believe some of you have met her at the uh, last CAB meeting. Um, Wendy works for me as a senior accountant, and she's been with the RMLD uh, for over four years. As part of her career development program, uh, she'll be presenting the uh, financials going forward. Oh, 
And, uh, you know, I have no doubt that she'll do a fine job, and you guys will probably appreciate the change anyways, too. <laughs> hey, welcome, right. Wendy. Turning to the October financials, which represents the first four months of this fiscal year. Uh, there are no surprises or unusual incidents to report on. We're still feeling the benefits of the hot September <coughs> uh, due to the fact that the audit was presented late because of all the changes caused by Gasby 68. I have no slides to present tonight. I will going forward. So I'm just going to focus on the figures tonight to get everybody caught up because it's really the first uh, presentation we had due to the uh, late audit presentation. So looking at page 3 and 3A, for the month of October, the net loss, the negative change in net assets was about $300,000, which reduced our year-to-date in net income to about $1.6 million. We had budgeted net income of about $1.6 million, resulting in net income being over budget by only about $25,000. The actual year-to-date fuel expenses exceeded fuel revenues by $700,000, and the purchase power capacity and transmission, the PPCT, expenses exceeded the revenues by about $40,000. Looking at the revenues on page 3A, our base <coughs> revenues exceeded the budgeted amount by $261,000, or about 3%. The actual base revenues came in at $8.7 million, compared to our budgeted amount of $8.4 million. Looking at the expense side on page 12A, year-to-date purchase power base expenses over budget by about $41,000, or a little more than a third of 1%. The actual purchase power base cost came in at $11.1 .1 million, is the same as the budgeted amount. Uh, the operating and maintenance expenses combined are under budget by a little more than a half million dollars, or about 10 percent. The actual O&M expenses came in at 4.5 million dollars versus the budgeted expenses at 5 million dollars. Depreciation expense and voluntary payments of the four towns are on budget. Looking at the cash section on page 9, our operating fund, very healthy balance, a little over 12 million dollars. Our capital fund balance is at 6.5 million dollars. Our rate stabilization fund, $6.8 million. Deferred fuel, about $4.4 million. And our energy conservation fund is a little over $700,000. On the general information side, looking at page 5, year-to-date kilowatt-hour sales are, about, are at $257 million, which is about 8.4 million kilowatt-hours, or about 3.4% 3 3 ahead of last year's actual figure. Mm. Here again, the benefits of that hot September month. Looking at the budget variance, cumulatively the five divisions are under budget by a little more than a half million dollars, or 7.1%. So overall, the first third of this fiscal year uh, is starting off strong. Mild winter could throw a little monkey wrench in all of that, but uh, uh, we, we have a good base uh, for the first four months for this fiscal year. Good. Thank you, Bob. Any Thank questions for Bob you. on the financials? Good. Thank you, Bob. Very good. Okay. Uh, Actually, I have one question. Yes. Uh, I'm just trying to go, Bob. And I, I noticed in, the, in terms of the operating expense, the operating expenses, the line for energy conservation seems to be so much less the actual than the budgets. Is there any particular reason why that? If you don't have the answer tonight, if you can get it to me afterwards, it'll be fine too. The actual is less than the budget? Yes. You just have reimbursed. Timing thing? I'm not sure what the status is of how many we have pending in the hopper. Okay. Uh, timing? Okay, fine. Okay. Very good. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. Um, any other uh, discussion items? Uh, we have uh, board meetings uh, coming up again. So mm -hmm. I know you'd be happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday, January 28th. Uh, so that'll be 7.30 as usual. And then Thursday, February 25th, as Colleen said, the T-shirt award ceremony is Thursday, January 7th. Um, do we, that's held here, right? Yes. And um, yes. do we know what time that'll be? Well, we, we, I'm sure that'll get. I'll have uh, Priscilla send out the flyer. Yeah. yeah. Great. That's always a fun, fun evening. It's a fun, it's a fun evening. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jean, do we need to uh, do anything uh, tonight as far as the next CAB meeting assignment? Well, if someone wants to take it. Okay. It's Wednesday, uh, January 13th. Mm -hmm. Dave, do you have any preferences? 
Of, a, of an attendee from the commissioner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either one, anyone, they're all good. Someone pick you me, like or someone me. you want to punish. You have, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, January 13th, you said? Yeah. Uh, January 13th, yes. Yeah, I'm going to be out of the country, so. Okay. I'm going to do oh, sure. myself. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? It's a good excuse. Aruba. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. It's probably my turn, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be here. So okay. I'm have do you to want one of us one. to pinch it for you in a rubber and you can? No. Do <laughs> <that>? <laughs> I could probably do it. Okay. Mr. Talbot, he'll do it. Huh? Step right, up. Dave, if you're backed up, uh, I'll back you up. So let me know if that's all right. Okay. okay. All right. So we got a Dave Talbot and then I'll. The, uh, what day of the week is that? On the bench. If I'm not in Aruba. Wednesday. 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 I haven't got the end by. <laughs> Tom, I'll back up you for backing up Dave. Okay. All right. Oh, I got you back. back. I can call in remotely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did that once before. We did. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. You'll be there for that, right, John? Yes. I've got okay. that on my calendar. All right, yes. then. I had answered Gene actually earlier on that that was the date that I could make it. What time's February 11th, Gene? 6.30? Yeah. 6.30 is fine. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so before we uh, motion to uh, move to executive session, I just wanted to uh, really almost piggyback on what Dave Nelson said. I, I wanted to thank, uh, on behalf of the board, the staff, you know, so for Colleen and Jean and Amit and Bob and Jane and, and all of those that are here from RMLD and not here that for all the support for, for this calendar year. I, I, I know we all depend on and ask a lot, uh, you know, oftentimes without uh, thinking about what the repercussions are in terms of uh, workloads, but it's obviously all of us staff and board with the intention of uh, providing the best uh, service for our ratepayers. So uh, with that in mind, thank you and, and wish all of you and all our viewing audience now and those who are on delay to tape, uh, happy holidays and a, and a successful new year. So uh, we need a motion to uh, move into executive session. Just this one question. Is a, I yes. noticed the policy committee meeting is on the agenda. I mean, do we need a policy meeting at some point? Policy is or is not on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. We should we should do that. Right. Get them done. Yep. Yeah. 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 Very good. Okay. Good. Ready, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Please. Move that the uh, commission go in executive session to approve the executive <coughs> session meeting minutes. Of July 30, 2015, and September 24, 2015, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and return to executive session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Second. Okay, and this is a uh, roll call vote. Mr. Zeno, aye. Mr. Talbot, aye. Mr. O'Rourke, aye. Mr. Stempeck, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Okay, and uh, a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. well, no, we, we, we don't. That, we, we don't. That in the other. No, we We're good. Do. Okay. Okay. Excellent. I thought, to, uh, I thought we had to adjourn the regular session. Thank you. Yeah. Same here. We come back. We come back. The holidays, everyone. Yeah, have a great one. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. We don't have to adjourn.